Today we're going to talk about putting one of these things on one of these things. Here's the tools you'll need. Something sharp and your mom's best sewing scissors. Okay, if you look inside one of these connectors, you can see that one of these inside faces is flat. So this one here, which is the one on the side of the clip, it's it's a smooth shot from there into the crimping zone. You can take a wire, push it against that and slide that in. So knowing that, let's do the next step. Next step, take some wire, score it. You don't have to cut it. Very light score is all that's needed because you fold it and the stuff just breaks. Pop that off, find the string, cut that off, don't need that, and then arrange your pairs. I like 568B, which means orange first. So we go orange, white, uh, orange, green, white. Blue, blue, white, green. Mm. So if you can't get it where you need it to be without untwisting too far, just twist more. Green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. All right, so once you get them all like that, sandwiched in a single layer between your thumb and index finger, uh, then you can start to pull them together. It's hard to describe this motion, but you do that, and a little wiggly, 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 and you soon produce a nice, perfectly flat arrangement of conductors. Just like that, orange, red, orange, you can verify your color code now, you don't have to peer into the connector, you got all kinds of room to work in, and then you can cut it. Orange, red, orange, now you take your mom's sewing scissors, and trim this to the length required for your connector. about that far. I like to use scissors rather than wire cutters. Wire cutters uh, tend to mash the ends and uh, you don't want to mash the ends. Um, so now I got that. I got my connector which I am going to hold terminal side up. I transfer this to my other hand because I'm going to do this the other hand. And then you take these, you put all those wire against that back face, oops, <laughs> against that back face and you use that to keep them lined up. And then stuff them in, which today isn't going to work. Why? Has this been through the crimper? And now I'm losing my beautiful organization. Come on. There we go. That's probably the most trouble I've ever had. All right. So that's stuffed in there. We can now verify the cable. I should make the thumbnail for this. Make Ethernet cables that work every time without testing because you can verify it and I will show you how. So when you've done this right, and this is the reason I use scissors, you can look in the end of the connector there. See that? And you see a bunch of little copper circles. The brown one's a little hard to tell, but it's there. Eight little copper circles. Because you can look from this end. I use a connector that's, that was in my pocket, so there's a bit of pocket light happening. You can look from this end, you can kind of see down there, but it's hard to tell. If you roll it over, you can kind of see, but again, it's hard to tell. But if you look at the end of the connector, you can definitely tell that all those wires are where they need to be. And you can even now stop, take a minute to re-verify your color code, which I have done. And now it's time to crimp. Let's crimp this. Wrong way, that way. And it's done. And there it is. So you can see the jacket is where it needs to be. This bit here is a latch that presses down and holds the jacket. If you look from the side view, you can see that that is compressed nicely. You don't want the jacket to go too far because it prevents the wires from going in properly. And you don't want it too short because it doesn't catch that latch properly. So, uh, <laughs> it looks like I got it perfect. But that's because I've probably done thousands of these. And of course, like I said, the ends, all the little copper circles, and everything's all good. The most important part is to not cut this short. Don't do this. 
because it's just gonna be, uh, score that. It, that's just gonna be aggravating. That's the wrong way to do it. If you're doing it that way, stop. You're just making your life miserable. What you wanna do is cut about two inches. Let me um show you how much I'm cutting this. So when I say score the jacket, I really do mean just score it. You don't wanna cut it. You don't wanna do, you know, like, I'll show you in a sec. You just, it, so when you do that and then you fold it over, it breaks. And then you can just pop it off. See, nice and clean. And then, cut the string, of course. It's super zoomed in here. So what happens when you cut it deep, when you take this and you don't use finesse on it, and you go like that, well, yeah, sure, the jacket's cut, but look, so are the conductors. That's not cool, because that also means the copper's nicked, which means that you've created uh, a point of failure in the copper. Let's verify that. I, mean, I never have. Okay, I'm going to strip this using a very gentle stripper I have. I don't know if it's going to show up. This is so difficult to see. Oh, you can see it. Just above the tweezers. See that? That's the nick. Now if I bend it... See if it's... Uh... Oh yeah. Whoop. That was four bends to get that to break. Now if we take a piece that's uh, that hasn't been nicked, I'll bend it using the tweezers the same way. One, two, holy Batman. Three, four, five, six. Oh, it's work hardening. Seven, eight, nine. Ah, this is hard to hold. Anyway, you get my point. It still hasn't broken because it didn't have that nick there. That nick creates a stress riser and ruins the wire. This style of tool has the, the built-in scoring apparatus here, and I don't trust them. I don't trust that if you got the wire pulled one way, it doesn't just sink into the blade and uh, nick the conductor as previously shown, um, which is why I use the, the sharp knife technique. What I actually used fluff in... Uh, back in the day when I was doing this was uh, Leatherman Squirt. So I'd use, my knife is so blunt right now, but I'd use that for the scoring. And um, if I'm desperate, I'll use these to do the trimming because they're basically scissors, but it, it takes a couple bites with this. Um, but usually my preferred tool is just a, a pair of scissors. Splicing scissors are made for this. They are a tool that you can buy, but dollar store scissors work fine.